Welcome to Youth Sunday, guys. Please stand with us in worship. Do you see what I see?
As you make your way back to your seats, I would invite you to remain standing as you are able, as we together affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. My name is Avery Crowley, and I'm a student here at Covenant, um, and I just have a few inv invitations for you this morning on Youth Sunday. Um, the first is um, Kids' Night at Covenant, and it is a time for kids to come to Covenant, also, aka a parents' night out, um, and just a time for them to have fun and relax and enjoy pizza and fellowship with one another, um, but also it's for the parents who want a night out and time to relax. So. Um, I would invite you to go on to the Covenant website and register for that, um, as it is a requirement. The second invitation I have for you today is pizza with the pastors, and um, it's actually today after the service, and it's at Crust Pizza, and it's a time for um, the pastors to just fellowship with the community, and um, a great time for people who are new to connect, um, and also a time for people who are members to just ask questions, um, and also connect with pastors in that way. Um, so those are, the, uh, those are the two invitations that I have for you, to, for you this morning, and I invite you to um, bow your heads with me for a word of prayer as we continue in worship. Um, dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for just the chance to come together this morning um, and worship together um, and learn more about your word and you. I just pray that you would allow us to focus our minds on you this morning, that you would um, give us an acknowledgement um, of our brokenness and sinfulness um, and just the fact the fact that um, we want to turn away from you, um, just our nature, and I just pray that you would allow us to, in acknowledgement of that, um, turn to you for our strength and for guidance um, as we walk through life. And I just pray over the youth this morning, um, as we are um, running the service, that you would allow us to just um, use your word um, and what you have for us to um, bring glory to you. I pray specifically for the worship team um, and for Aiden that you would just speak through them and allow them to be clear um, and follow your path for them this morning. I pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Yeah. 
now we're going to go ahead and raise a hallelujah with this next song. I raise a hallelujah 
Let's go ahead and bow our heads in prayer. Lord, I thank you for being with all of us today in your house. Thank you for working your Holy Spirit through the worship team. And um, be with Aiden today. Be with all of us. Let the words that we sing and that we preach today reach out to every one of the hearts in this room. I praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's continue our worship with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, kids, y'all are released. Y'all can go back to Cub Kids. Have a good time. <laughs> All right, the scripture we're reading today is 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 7 through 11. That day... David first appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in his manner. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share a little of my testimony. Lord, I ask that you will allow me to be your vessel to do your will. That every word I speak will be your words. Lord, I ask that I'm able to touch the hearts of everyone in the congregation by sharing a little bit about how you so graciously touched my heart. Amen. Good morning. My name is Aiden Burnham. I'm a member of the Covenant Youth Group, and I'm a junior at Tomball High School. One privilege I have had from attending Tomball ISD schools since I was in kindergarten is I have had a lot of amazing teachers. There is one teacher I believe, however, to be the best teacher I have had to date. My high school computer science teacher. As high schoolers would say, Mr. Gidry is him. You know, he's him. When it comes to football, Tom Brady is him. When it comes to wizarding, Harry Potter is him. When it comes to basketball, Michael Jordan is him. Yes, I did not say LeBron James. <laughs> Mr. Gidry is him. Mr. Gidry dropped out of high school a year early, skipped college, and got straight to work in the computer science field. His skills helped him make lots of money and retire from that side of life early on. Because Mr. Gidry had accomplished so much so early, he decided to share his gifts with children and teach. This is a teacher who had actually done what we are in his class for. He is a professional on the topic. There comes a certain level, and I think y'all know what I'm talking about, when someone is so good at something, you just have to listen. It is like when they're about to speak, the room goes quiet. When Mr. Gidry is teaching how to code, everyone begins to listen. Now back to our scripture. In the scripture, we are introduced to a character known as David. Now let me tell y'all one thing. David knew how to praise the Lord. We come on Sundays and we listen to Zach and we listen to Alyssa, and we might think that they're amazing at praising the Lord. But people, we need to come to grips with the fact that when it comes to praise, David is him. When David would begin to teach how to praise the Lord, everyone would listen. 
To give some context to our passage today, David had just retrieved the Ark of the Covenant. David went to look for the Ark because he had just finished establishing the capital of Israel and wants this Ark to be there so praise can be at the center of the country. David assigns the descendants of Aaron and the Levites to carry the Ark to Jerusalem where it is then placed. This is the first time the Ark has ever actually been in Jerusalem. David then appoints Asaph and his associates to watch over the ark and give praise to the Lord. This is it. This is the moment where David, the man to listen to about praise, the man who has written at least 73 psalms, the David that said, even though I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. Come on now. Who else heard that one? This is the same David that said, the Lord is my strength and shield. Y'all, this is the same David that even Jesus quoted in Matthew 21, 16, saying, have you not read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise? Referring back to David's writings in Psalms 8, 2. Back to 1 Chronicles. This is the moment where David is about to give instructions on how to praise the Lord. David gives a long speech on how to praise the Lord, but in this there was one word that stuck out to me while reading his instructions. In verse 11, it says, "Seek, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. I've always tried to put it on my heart to praise the Lord whenever I can. Psalms 34, 1 reads, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. This verse speaks to me and is one I try to live by. I find the times in my life when I'm praising the Lord the most to be the best for me. And times when I find myself without praise, I feel a little lost. This verse by David, though, confused me, so I wanted to break it down. What does it truly mean to seek the Lord? We hear the word seek all the time in Scripture. In Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. I don't know about y'all, but one of the first things that comes to mind when I hear the word seek is the game hide and seek. I like to think I am very good at hide and seek. I would be bold enough to claim I am the best hide and seek player in covenant history. When it comes to hide and seek, I am him. We play a game in youth called Ghost in the Graveyard, where one person goes out and hides, and everyone is supposed to be looking for them, but typically just ends up trying to scare each other. There comes a point in the game, though, where it has just been too long without the hider being found. People slowly start to shift their focus away from scaring and start actually looking for the hider. For example, one mission trip when it was finally my time to be the hider. I had prepared for this moment for the last few years, scoping out all the spots, waiting for my opportunity to hide in the group. Y'all, I even brought a separate change of clothes just for this game. I had black shoes, black soccer socks, you know the ones that go to your knees. I had black leggings that I tucked into the socks, black shorts. I had a black long sleeve shirt that I turned inside out because it was slightly darker inside out than it was normally. Y'all, I even had a black ski mask. <laughs> I mean it, y'all. I was locked in. Now the game started, and I found the perfect spot under a bed in the darkest corner of the darkest room. You know, you might be saying, Aiden, going under a bed is not a great spot. How can you be him at hide and seek hiding under a bed. Let me tell y'all, you could be two inches away from my face and be looking right at me and have no idea I was there. As the game started to go on, I could hear screams all around me. Several times people walked into my room saying, it's clear, not even bothering to look under the beds out of fear. After about an hour, the screams started to stop and more and more people started to look for me. My own father 
started to make search teams just to look for me. Now, they got to a point where they're flipping mattresses, looking under all the beds, checking every corner. My own dad came into my room multiple times and still had no idea that I was there. I was the champ at Ghost in the Graveyard. I even started to fall asleep. Eventually, on about the fourth or fifth time of doing a check in my room, my dad hovered over me for just a few seconds, and I slowly felt a hand hit my leg. Through intentionally seeking me out with all their hearts, I had been found. I asked him, how could you have possibly found me? And he said it's because where I was was actually darker than the whole room. Y'all, my only downfall was I was too good at the game. Now, back to our scripture. How can this help us decipher this passage? Because it is clear God is in no way hiding from us. But maybe this means all we have to do is find God. And that's what it means to seek him. Maybe David is telling us we just need to see God in our lives. Now, sometimes this can be really easy. Do any of y'all have that one place where it's just impossible not to see God? For me, it's in Big Bend State Park. Whenever I go to Big Bend State Park with my grandpa and my dad, we like to stay in this one spot atop of a mesa, miles away from everyone. A mesa is basically this big flat area with huge drops on each side with like crazy valleys, crazy rock structures. You can get a view miles out from where we were staying. When I would wake up in the morning, sip on my hot chocolate, go to the perfect vantage point, and watch the 360 sunrise of blue, pink, orange, and red colors all around me, it was impossible not to see God. I'll give you another one. Youth, for those of you who were on ski trip, y'all might be able to relate, but whenever I would pull to the side after going on top of a ski lift, and I'd be clipping in my skis, and you can kind of see all the other vast snowy mountains in the distance, and you take a moment to really take it all in, it is impossible not to see God. What is that spot for you? Or maybe it's not a spot at all. Maybe for you, it's a certain meal or an activity or even a certain person or a song. It might even just be the time of day when you wake up in the morning and no one is awake but you and God. What is that thing for you? Now, y'all might have these places or things in your life, but be saying, Aiden, I can't always be with this one thing. It's not always that easy to see God. There are times in our lives where we struggle to find God. In our normal lives alone, we have so many things trying to distract us from seeing God. Testify, everyone. We all have an eight-ounce huge distraction from God in our back pockets. But if you can manage to turn your attention away from these distractions... He can still be seen. When you clear your mind of these distractions, he can be found. But all of these are just in our normal lives. What about when times are really hard? Times when we feel like there is no hope. Times where there seems to be no light in the darkness. In times of pain, in times of struggle, in times of loss. How can we find God in these depths when it feels like he isn't anywhere? The Bible says in Matthew 28, 20, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We can hear that God is with us in our valleys, but whenever we're actually in these valleys, we can't help but ask why. God, why would you do this? Why would you allow this to happen? We hear a verse that we are turned to a lot in these hard times. I'm sure many of y'all might know it. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We can hear this and understand this, but 
when tragedy strikes, you still find yourself questioning God. How could these possibly be the plans that you have for me? What people don't see and commonly miss is that two verses later, in Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Let me say that again. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You see, when we are in these valleys, God requires us to actively seek him out. We have to go to the Lord for guidance in these hard times, and this requires an active searching for the Lord, and it overjoys the Lord when we seek him out. In 2022, tragedy struck in our community. Three brothers, a cousin, and a grandfather were murdered. One of these boys was one of my best friends, Carson Collins. When I found out he was taken from me, I remember just sitting still in my room in disbelief, feeling lost, disoriented, unsure of what to do. I couldn't help but ask God, how in the world would you allow this to happen? I remember sitting with my family in a state of mourning and prayer for hours over my friend Carson and my sister's friend Waylon. In this state, I sat and I could not see God anywhere. And in this state of complete emptiness, where I felt like there was no hope, there were their parents. I had just lost a best friend but they had lost so much more. They lost three sons, a nephew, and a father. When I couldn't see God anywhere, how in the world could they? And yet, through an unbelievable unimaginable strength, they manage to see the Lord in this situation. I witnessed one of the greatest displays of faith in my friends, Chris and Missy, as they walked with Christ through this tragedy. Instead of only asking God, why would you let this happen? They also asked God, what do you want me to do with this? How do you want me to respond? In this valley, they didn't accidentally find God. They sought out God. His guidance, his wisdom, his love, though they were in extraordinary pain, as they looked to the Lord and found his intimate presence in comfort and peace, they also invited others, invited me to seek the Lord. And this brought me to know seeking the Lord is not simply seeing God. It is an entirely different thing. What do y'all think it looks like to truly seek out the Lord? 
the definition of seek that I now associate with David's usage is to desire to obtain something. When you desire something, it requires a want and an urge. We would actively look for and work for something that we desire. When we seek out the Lord, we don't just know he is with us, but we look to him daily and ask him what his plans for us are. All my life, I've grown up in the church, going weekly, hearing his teachings commonly. I thought I knew God because I knew God was real. And because I knew God was real, I didn't need to seek him because I already knew he was there. Now, this might be you right now, or this could be your past, but this is not truly knowing or seeking God. David tells us to seek out God's face. This is not as simple as knowing God is there, but to seek out God's face is to seek out a personal relationship with the Lord. David is really particular in his words and intentionally uses the word face. When you think of a face, you think of what it represents. The face shows emotion and personality. It isn't something cold, distant, or detached. When I shifted my life to truly seek out the Lord and his face, I grew a new connection with him. I didn't just live knowing he was there and sometimes pray to him when I needed something. I didn't just go to church on Sundays, but instead I now sought him out for wisdom and guidance and help daily. I stopped only praying to the Lord when it was convenient for me to do so, but instead went to him asking God, how can I grow from this? What do you want my response to be? I committed to stop living my life like God wasn't there outside of church and instead sought to rely on him always. I felt like there was a hole in my life that had finally been filled. For example, before this shift occurred in my life, I found myself commonly doubting God's motives and his decisions. I almost looked for more reasons why God was wrong than why God was right. When I changed my form of seeking to truly seeking God's face, my eyes were opened to him. Even without always knowing why, I tried to no longer doubt God's decisions. I began to listen to David's instructions and focus my life on seeking his face always. The shift in seeking the Lord is something I am so happy to have experienced and I felt necessary to share it with all of y'all. The impact of seeking the Lord David tells us to has been significant as I have experienced growth, patience, and clarity. My relationship with the Lord has grown into a personal one, a father-son one. This is how I met the Father. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for opening my eyes to truly seek you, for understanding that you are with me always. I pray that you allow everyone else to experience this change in seeking the Lord and understand that you are with us at all times to go to for joy, peace, comfort, conversation. Thank you for being with us always. Amen. I invite you to extend a hand of blessing as we offer a blessing over Aiden and thank him for his testimony. Lord, we come before you thankful for the clarity that you've provided Aiden in his life and the way in which you have uh, taught him through your word how to seek your face always. Lord, thank you for David's witness and what it means for us to 
to seek after you. Lord, we pray that you would help us to seek you when it is easy, to seek you in our everyday, and to seek you when it is hard. Lord, I praise you that you have sustained Aiden through some deep, dark valleys, and that you have given him the strength to bear witness to your love in the midst of it. Lord, bless him as your servant. Use him, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we enter into a time of offering, I uh, want to remind everyone, if you're a member here, uh, we are in our uh, annual giving drive. We began it last week and materials were passed out. If you haven't received those materials, there's some available uh, in the commons on the way out. Uh, next Sunday is Commitment Sunday. Uh, just want to remind you to be prepared to bring those cards back. Uh, they could be returned in person. There's also a digital form that could be done. Uh, we're going to invite the students to come forward for this morning's offering. First, let's offer a word of prayer and thanksgiving. Lord, we ask that you would bless these gifts and the givers as well. All that is given to the work and ministry of your church, we pray it would be for the multiplication of disciples, Lord, that we would make disciples who love you with their whole hearts, minds, souls, and strength. Lord, be glorified in this time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. With us, just come forward for this morning's offering. Guys, please stand with us as we sing our last song of worship. I was bad.
just have them lead every Sunday. Amen? Yes. Oh, man. It's such a beautiful thing to see how the Lord is moving in our midst. I thank God for all of these students, for all of their gifts. Janeth, you're better than your daddy on, on the bass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Janeth's dad plays bass in Spanish worship, and she's over here cranking it. I love it. Hey, uh, I do want to offer just one brief word of invitation. Uh, we have a few slots left open uh, for our student ministry, ministry ski trip. As you can see, it's a blessing to be able to be a part of this. If you have a student that hasn't signed up yet, please go ahead and, and consider that. If you're a family, we do have probably enough slots for one or two families to be able to go. And there are some private rooms with a couple of queen beds downstairs. Uh, we'd love to invite you all to tag along. You don't even have to ride in the 15-passenger van if you're a family and you don't have uh, plans yet for ski trips. So uh, I hope that you'll consider that uh, as we're working to fill the rest of that trip out. Um, uh, I'm going to invite Aiden to come up and offer a benediction. Would you please stand? Lord, we move from this place confident in your presence with us, seeking your face always. In Jesus' name we go. Amen. <laughs>